I recently came across this amazing library called Bladewind UI. This is a collection of Laravel Blade components styled with Tailwind CSS and Alpine.js. As of now, they offer 27 components ranging from simple buttons and alerts to more complex UI elements like date pickers, rating inputs, and verification codes. Basically, you have everything you need to build your application without having to worry about styles and UI functionality, giving you more time to focus on the backend. You must use Laravel 7 or higher given that the concept of Blade Components was introduced in this version. And the Bladewind UI website states that you need PHP 7.3 or higher. The first thing we need is a new project. I'll use Laravel Sail with the Breeze package for this example. I'm not going to get into how to install Laravel with Breeze. I have another video where I explain the process in detail, so you can check that later. Quick tip, if you're getting this warning when you run Laravel Mix, try using this command. As of this recording, this is the most effective way of solving this problem. I hope it gets patched soon, but in the meantime, this will do the trick. Once our project has been created, the next step is to install the BladeWind UI package with Composer. Once the installation is finished, you can find all of the components inside Resources, Views, Components, Bladewind. Now let's create a playground to try out some components. I will take the default Welcome view and remove all this from the head and also remove everything in the body. I should mention that even though this has very useful components, and most likely will save you a lot of time, the project is relatively new. I'm sure the package will only get better with time, but I think it's important to keep this in mind if you plan to use it in one of your projects. Okay, with that warning out of the way, let's continue. The last step in the installation process is to include these lines in the head section. The documentation also recommends to include Alpine.js 3 as a dependency, but since I installed Laravel Breeze, this is already included. I just need to add a link to the app.js file and that will initialize Alpine.js. Just don't forget to add the defer option, otherwise you're gonna get a bunch of errors. Additionally, I will include the link to the app.css file just to have access to Tailwind CSS. If you choose not to use Laravel Breeze, then you must install both Alpine.js and Tailwind CSS to follow along. I have another video explaining how to install Tailwind CSS if you want to check that out later, and also in the description of this video you can find a link to a Twitter thread regarding the installation of Alpine.js. But anyway, back to our example. Before I begin, I'll just start Laravel Mix and put it on watch mode. Okay now, the first component I'll try out is a simple card. This will be a place to put our content in. Let's see how that looks. Mm, it's a little too hard to see. Let's try giving the page a darker gray background. Okay, that's better. As you can see, the card is extending to the full width of the page. To fix this, we can try out another very simple component called Centered Content. It will help keep our card center in the page 
with a maximum size based on our preference. All right, that's much better. If you want to reduce the padding of the card, just use the reduce padding option and set it to true. And I will also add some margin to the top like this. I want to put the rest of our examples in a list. Fortunately, we have a list view component we can use for that. Okay, let's use a very common component, a button. Now, I usually prefer my buttons to be more square shaped so I'll pass a class here and use the exclamation to override the default rounded corners. There you go. And we can even customize this even further. We can reduce the padding to make it a bit more compact or even change the color and font weight. Okay, let's try another component. How about an alert? As you would expect, we can have different type of alerts. Let's duplicate this a couple of times and make the second one a warning and the third one an error. But here's one of my complaints. It's a small one, but it can be annoying sometimes. Some components can be very opinionated about their styles like the list item, for example. If we examine the code of the component, it has a display of flex. In most cases, this works fine, but if I want to change that, my only option is to place the contents of the item inside another div. It would be nice if I could just set my own classes directly and then have the component merge those internally. Hopefully this can be added as an option in the future. But anyway, let's try another one, and this is one of my favorites, a date picker. That's right, a fully functional, ready to use date picker in seconds. Now I'm going to show you how easy it is to customize these components to fit your specific needs. First, I want round borders for my input. The default square borders are just not good for me. There is no way to modify this aspect using properties, and adding a class won't do anything. But since all the files were published during installation, I can modify those components as I see fit. If I study the contents of the date picker component, I can see that it's making use of another component called input. But there is an important note here. Notice how, instead of dots, it is using double columns. By using this notation, it is referencing the component located inside the vendor folder and not the one published for us to modify. So the first thing I have to do is to change this for a dot. In this way, all changes I make to the input component will be reflected in the date picker. Now let's open the input component. We can see all the default classes used for the input. I will add my own classes here for rounded corners. Let's see how that looks. Excellent. Now check this out. By default, the color scheme of the inputs is set to follow the system preferences. In my case, I like dark mode, so the input appears with a dark theme. If I change the color theme of my Mac to light mode, the input changes as well. This is actually a feature of Tailwind CSS and not the component itself, but that's the beauty. Since the components are built with Tailwind CSS, we can apply all sorts of customizations with minimum effort. For example, if I don't want my inputs to follow the system theme, maybe I want them to always have a light theme instead. Well, just add this line in your Tailwind 
config.js. To have the theme, follow a manual class-based configuration instead of system preference. Now the field has a light theme. And we can always toggle this manually by adding the dark class to any pattern element, like the body for example. If you want to find out more, head over to bladewindui.com and check all the other components available. They all come with excellent documentation and practical examples. Alright, that'll be all for this video. What do you think about this package? Do you think you'll try it out in your next project? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other interesting Laravel packages you would like to see videos for, leave that in the comments as well. I'll see you in the next one.